Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Technique Tuesday. My name is Ali Board, and it is very lovely to have you here. Down here in Dorset today, it is rainy and it's cold and my chickens are all complaining. So what better way than to spend an hour or so with you lovely people painting a fabulous picture. Now I have noticed in the live chat that a couple of you are new to this. So uh, you're so welcome and thank you very much uh, for joining me. Um, if you like to join in the chat and you're watching this live, then please do so. If I see any little comments pop up and uh, you've got a question or anything like that, then I will try to address them. So if you see me glancing over to one side, it's not because I have been fabulously, um, that my attention has been stolen. It's just lots of lovely people popping up to say good morning. Now you might be watching this on my website, you might be watching it on YouTube, however it is that you are um, accessing this content, would you be so kind to just give me a bit of a like or a subscribe or a comment? Any of those things are absolutely free to you to do and uh, mean the world to me in terms of keeping these broadcasts available to everybody. Now there are some people that I uh, missed saying good morning to. I try to say hello in the chat uh, before I go live, but just sometimes uh, I miss a few people and I don't want to ignore you. So who haven't I said good morning to yet? Um, the other Dorset Alley, good morning to you. Uh, Val, Anne, uh, Ginny, good morning and all of those things. Oh, and Pamela as well, yes. Uh, the UK is not exactly bathed in sunshine today, but I know that there are others of you scattered across the globe. So I hope you are having better weather. It's a very British thing, isn't it, to talk about the weather. And lots of people uh, commenting uh, on this little addition to my uh, outfit this morning. This is the lovely Rufus. Um, and uh, he's a little good luck charm for me and lots of people commenting on uh, my fancy glasses and all that kind of stuff yes uh, uh, so there's some uh, hellos I haven't said yet uh, Shizuka oh and B she says it's her birthday oh good morning and very very happy birthday and bless you for joining me on your birthday I feel very honored indeed uh, River good morning uh, Jackie uh, who else have we got? Uh, all sorts of people in the room. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, just in case you are a newbie and you're not quite sure where to go to find the resources, bear with me a second while we do this. There's a, a couple of ways that uh, you can access the resources or find me in other places. Uh, so the first thing that you can do is to go over to the website, www.learningtopaint.co.uk. You might be there already. You might be there already, but if you are watching this on YouTube um, and you are a newbie, then that is my website for you to go and uh, have a look at all sorts of things. I'll take you over there in just a second. And uh, if you like to do social media, uh, no matter what the platform, you will find me at the little at symbol Ali Board Artist. So just pop that into the search of any of the social medias and you'll find me sometimes there as Ali Board Artist, sometimes there as Alison Seaboard depends how formal I am feeling but let's take you over to the website just so that you can see exactly where you have to go to find the resources for today's broadcast so here is the home page of my website this is what you will see if you're watching on um, if you're looking at it on a device such as a smartphone or a tablet it might look a little bit different to this it might not have that index at the top it might just have a little plus button which if you tap on that plus button, that menu across the top will show up. And uh, what you're looking for, you can see all sorts of lovely, exciting information up here. But what you're after for Technique Tuesday is that word there. It says blog. And if we click on that, you can see that, uh, I mean, masses and masses of bits of information there. There's the tips and tricks that I do once a month. There's the throwback Thursday that I do once a month. There's Ask Ali, which I do every single week. But here we have the Technique Tuesday for March. Let's click on that bit that says read more, read more. And you will see a bit of information, our theme of the month this month, which is bugs, bees and butterflies. So uh, if you are into that as a subject, lots for you to enjoy. 
and then if I scroll down you will see just a very uh, kind of vague overview of what equipment and I make it vague so that you can interpret it how you see fit because we don't all have exactly the same equipment I will take you through the equipment that I am going to be using um, and uh, hopefully offer up a few alternative suggestions and then when we have recorded this that's where you can go back and uh, watch the broadcast and you'll see my painting there and you'll also see the photograph that I am using for inspiration. So just to remind you that's to go back to the Learning to Paint website, tap on the word that says blog and then you should be able to find it without too much trouble at all. So let's give you a little bit of a backstory on uh, what we're doing today. Yes, uh, the theme of the month is uh, bugs, bees and butterflies and I've got all sorts of things going on this month with the tuition that I am doing. You will see it on the coming up pages of the website um, or in, on any of my social media but I wanted to show you this because uh, you can see the kind of the range of things that uh, I'm going to be painting today. Uh, so we've got a bee, we've got a ladybird, obviously today there you can see there's that Technique Tuesday, our metallic moth. Um, we've got a big all day workshop coming up next week, which is a painted patchwork butterfly, which incorporates uh, collage work and all sorts of things, that would be my happy place. Uh, Tips and Tricks this month is a really interesting one. Um, it's a stag beetle, but I did it in alcohol markers on Upo paper, so keep your eyes peeled from that one. The All Aboard Artists at Prussian Blue Level have a grasshopper to paint, and they will also be enjoying uh, a demonstration all about how to paint dragonfly wings. So a real varied selection of things that's going to be going on this month. I'm looking forward to it hugely. So without further ado, shall we go to that overhead camera and we'll have a look and see uh, what it is that I've prepped for you. And I will take you through today's project. So here we have, you can probably see it's a little bit chaotic, a little bit chaotic all the way uh, around. Oh, I've just got a few hellos to say because I've, I've missed some people. Who have I missed? Rosemary, good morning, has just got back from her trip to Australia. Um, lovely to have you back safely, Rosemary. I do hope you had fun. Liz, lovely to have you here uh, too and has said she's finally caught the live chat. How awesome. And thank you very much for everybody who's made very kind comments about my work today. So as I was saying, a chaotic around my workspace today because I have pulled all sorts of uh, kit out in order to do this. Why have I got so much stuff? Why is it so chaotic? It's chaotic because I haven't painted this before. Sometimes when I do these projects, I know that you think, oh, well, maybe she's practiced it three or four times. Uh, and so when she gets it to camera, it'll go absolutely smoothly. I can't even begin to impress upon you how I don't do that. <laughs> and I don't do that for a number of reasons. I do it so that you can see me grapple with it in real time. So that if something happens, a mistake, or I have to change my mind, you get to uh, follow along for the challenge. And I also don't particularly pre-practice these uh, broadcasts because I like to keep it fresh. And that way I am discovering things in the same time frame that you are too. Now that does mean <laughs> that I have to have possibly more uh, kit around me than I potentially need, but we've all got art stashes, haven't we? I mean, mine possibly uh, the largest art stash of all, but that's half the fun, dragging things out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the project. We'll have a chat about stuff. Do stick questions in the chat. And if you're watching this on catch up, whether that's via social media or the website, and you still have a question, pop it into the comments part of it. Tag me in it and then I will try to get to your question as soon as I can. Anne is saying that's not chaotic, that's tidy and organised and you really haven't seen the floor around my broadcasting station. Uh, so here we have my black watercolour pad. So this is the pad that is uh, available both on my website or through the SAA who are fabulous at uh, creating products for me. And it is a very black watercolour paper. It is also the last sheet in the pad, so I need to get some for myself. So in true Technique Tuesday style, I'm going to chuck that on the floor 
and I'm going to use my magnets just to anchor this down so that it doesn't slip. And what I've uh, tried to do for you is to pop the photograph that I'm working from up here in the top left hand corner so you can see exactly the inspiration that I am using for this project. Now this, I chose this moth for a reason, an unusual moth and you might have these in your part of the world or you might not have come across them before. This is a hummingbird hawk moth. Now I am lucky enough to have these in my garden, we get them every summer. And uh, I chose this photograph because this particular hummingbird hawk moth has, uh, is having a bit of a feed on some buddleia. And that's exactly where I see the hawk moths in my back garden. My photography skills, not quite good enough to capture one of them yet. I've managed to capture little blurred versions, but uh, I need to read up on how to use my camera properly in order to get as fabulous a photograph as this one. Now, they are incredible creatures, got this long proboscis, which uh, sort of favours those flowers that uh, have a long kind of uh, trumpet uh, so that they can get the proboscis right down into the centre of that trumpet of the flower. And of course, that means that they have access to nectar that other insects don't necessarily because of that amazing long proboscis that we've got there. They are also seen as a very good omen. I've been reading about hummingbird hawk moths because I like to be able to understand my uh, subject matter a bit better. And one of the reasons that they are a very good omen apparently is because a swarm of them was seen just off the coast, just uh, off the coast uh, near where I am uh, on the morning of D-Day and they took that as a very good sign. So isn't that interesting? Um, and lots of people saying that they have them on their plants too. Keep an eye out for them because they are incredible creatures. So I've drawn it out onto my black watercolour paper. The thing that I used to draw it out was a white watercolour pencil. I use a watercolour pencil so that hopefully uh, if my watercolour paint or whatever it is I'm going to be using comes into contact with the white lines then uh, it's going to sort of diffuse um, or dissipate a little more. You can use a graphite pencil. It's just much harder to see. And for the purposes of this broadcast, you're going to want to be able to see nice and clearly what it is that I am working on. Now, one of the things I'm going to do uh, just before we start is I'm going to take my putty eraser and over some of the lines, I'm going to knock them back a little bit. Putty eraser tends to remove just the surface of the whatever it is that you have drawn with. And the reason that I'm doing that is because on not on I don't on everything, I don't want it to have a, a kind of white halo around it. I left it nice and bright so that you could see exactly what it is that I'm doing, but I just need to take the edge off it now. And a putty eraser is the perfect tool for that. I'll pop it back in its box before my uh, dog gets hold of it and uses it as chewing gum. Um, if you make any sort of error or you want to change anything and you're working in white watercolour pencil, you will find that a, a plastic eraser erases that uh, quite cleanly too. This is one of those uh, ones that looks like a pencil. This is made by Mono, uh, Tombow, sorry, it's called a Mono Zero. And uh, I can edit it. So I had plenty of time to edit the things that I had there. Now I'm going to start with a few washes in the background and uh, to do that I've just got to do a bit of reorganising here. I've got uh, a spray bottle for that. I'm going to use a, a nice mop for the background. And I do, whilst I do like the black and I do like it for the drama. Good morning lovely Jean, uh, thank you for joining me, lovely to have you here. Um, I like the drama of the black and obviously the black is going to uh, show up some of the ideas that I've got for materials. But I want to set the scene first. So I'm going to pop a bit of watercolour on there. And we're going to start as we mean to go on. Um, so we're going to start with metallics right from the get-go. And the metallics that I have uh, pulled out of my stash for this today. Again, I don't know that I'm going to be using uh, all of these. But they're some of the metallic watercolours made by Daniel Smith. Now I've got iridescent jade. I've got... Um, duochrome uh, cactus flower oceanic i've got an iridescent copper an interference silver 
that's uh, time for another broadcast when we talk about the difference between those things. All I was looking for, really, is are they shiny and interesting? And I wanted them to be uh, in colours suitable for my subject. We're going to actually paint with something else later on. But to start with, I've got my uh, ceramic palette here. It looks a bit bright uh, in the camera, this ceramic palette, so I apologise if you can't see it. It's because my camera is struggling to film with the black paper. I have squeezed out the duochrome oceanic there. Uh, let's get it into the close-up camera so that you can uh, see. Oh, it really doesn't like that. So that you can see it a bit better. There you go. It's a sort of yellowy, greeny, turquoisey kind of uh, metallic colour for you. So I've got a bit of that. And I'm going to use a bit of iridescent jade as well. So let's squeeze some of this out. I haven't used these tubes for quite a while. So it's as good a reason as any, isn't it? As you can see, I don't take care of my tubes either with the lids. Um, what I want to do is to mix up a nice wash of these and then we'll drop it in the background and we'll see what we get, shall we? So brush into the water. Let's make a puddle of them. Let's start with that iridescent jade. So this is quite a subtle colour when it goes on. Um, the black is still going to show through it, but I want that to happen. And here's that uh, duochrome oceanic. So you can see it's got a much more kind of turquoisey uh, mass tone to it. So let's give that a bit of a swirl around. As you can see, I am such a messy article. I've already blobbed watercolour on the background, but we don't worry about stuff like that. That is what kitchen roll is for. So let's grab a sheet of that, scrunch it up, and uh, let's give the background a bit of a spritz. Now, one of the joyful things about demonstrating on black paper, uh, particularly for this technique where I like to uh, create a sort of soft vignette style background, is you can see exactly where I'm spraying. Much harder to uh, see it when I'm demonstrating on white paper. So let's start with that iridescent jade, shall we? Oh, let's just have a bit of a reorganise. And let's throw it in to some areas kind of around the Bodleia. Now, when you paint on black paper, you need a slightly different mindset because it's such an experimental way of working that you have to make your peace with the fact that you don't have nearly as much control over the colour as you do or as you are used to on white watercolour paper. Why am I saying that? Because the colour that it is at the moment and the strength of colour when it's dry are two very different things. Couple that with the fact that we're using metallics so again, what they look like when they go down and what they look like when they're dry are ever so slightly different. So I am going to try to very hard not overthink it and uh, slosh some colour on and then we'll worry about stuff later. So I'm allowing my brush to kind of dance its way around. I think what we will need to do as well is to get a little bit of that in and amongst that buddleia. That's gone on to dry paper. It'll probably, let's let's make it swim a bit, shall we? I'm not gonna be doing uh, every last little flower. I'm no botanical painter at all. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna be concentrating my detail on my moth because that is the star of today's show. Um, you will have more time. You will have more patience than me and you will be able to paint in as much or as little detail as you like. If you know my work well, then you know that I very much favour the slosh it on technique or the whack it on and worry about it later technique. So a bit of water to get it to uh, run. And then I think, I think, what am I saying? I know that we need to have a bit of spatter going on um, just because it makes some interesting marks on the paper. And it's a nice kind of extra texture and I think we want to kind of make it look like our moth is flying don't we so uh, Lauren good morning she is saying uh, just popped in from South Africa <laughs> of course she <you> did <laughs> good morning Lauren lovely to have you here thank you very much for popping in 
your support is much appreciated right can you have too much spatter i don't think so right clean that brush off make sure that we get uh, all of that coming away let's stick that to one side and let's do a bit of a cloud rag roll with our kitchen roll so we want to knock all the texture out of it and uh, when i say cloud it's because you're kind of going to make it into a very loose cloud shape so sometimes when you rag roll people press too hard and all i want to do is to roll it over that surface i want to mop up any puddles that I don't like the look of and to give it a bit of extra texture mind you it's quite textured already so I'm not going to worry too much about how much I lift away and then let's take those uh, magnets away from the piece of paper and I'm going to give it a blast with the heat gun so you just need to bear with me while I do that do get your questions in on the live YouTube chat um and uh, anything that i can help you with or alternatives to the metallics if you want to ask for my advice please do now one of the things that you can watch of course is how this will change as it dries can you see how the paper goes back to being black And uh, Gary has just said that the swirling water pot looks like some sort of vortex to another dimension. Oh, did I not tell you that I had a fifth dimension going on on my drawing board? Do forgive me. <laughs> so Trudy is saying, loving the explosion of metallic, wondering if it will fade a bit when it dries. So the where the water is, you can see, look, if I dry that bit, it lessens but actually the metallic becomes more metallic it's quite hard to pick up metallics in a camera but we'll see if we can do it in a minute so Christine is asking about my drawing board about it being made of metal um, and it's a really good question uh, I don't know if they're available in art shops uh, Christine it's literally an old bit of metal, an old bit of steel from my husband's shed. It's not fancy. All I have done, let's just show you, all I have done is cover it in uh, fancy sticky back plastic to make it look a bit more attractive. If I turn it over, you can uh, see it. Look, really dull, boring thing. So I thought, well, I'll make it look a bit more attractive as I seem to do quite a few of these broadcasts. And it is just a bit of steel. You could use anything, really. Um, so I hope that helps. <laughs> Rabina is saying magic potions are happening. <laughs> Love it. Right, let's try it from the back as well, just to even out the paper. I'm going to just turn it up a little bit. over again and then we need to do the paper dance why do we need to do the paper dance this is the paper dance oh, like this now why do we need to do that we need to do that because where I have wet the paper it has got uh, a bit of a kink in it and also I haven't helped myself because some of these fibres uh, were dry and then I wet some of them so some of the fibres have stretched and some of them haven't but I tend to find if you don't stick your piece of paper down if you just lightly tack it down then uh, if you uh, warm it up as you dry it and then do this with it I know it looks daft but then look at that goes back completely and utterly flat again now what I do want to show you can you see the metallic? Can you see how the light is bouncing off those delicious colours? Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Very pretty. I'm liking that a lot. It's going to be a right old combination of metallics this morning. 
so now we've got that on now I want to uh, take care of the buddlier and I'm going to do that in a couple of ways uh, combining a couple of products I'm going to shift this over temporarily and uh, bring in my palette so what I'm going to do is I've got the Daniel Smith uh, duochrome cactus flower watercolor here and I'm going to have two blobs of it one over there and uh, one over there and then oh that is leaking quite dramatically uh, in this one in the first one good morning Anita lovely to have you here SAA's resident artist thank you very much for taking the time to tune in that's very kind of you because I know you're all very busy up at HQ today uh, so I've got a puddle of that one so it's a kind of it's a pinky lilac-y colour with a bit of a brown undertone as well quite interesting you can see it at shining and then in this one, uh, Anne, Angie, hold that thought. <laughs> Anne is asking about Perlex because in this one, I'm going to turn this watercolour into more like a gouache. And I'm going to use two products to do that. The first one that I'm going to be using is Perlex. Now, this is Perlex. I use Perlex quite a lot in my work. It's a rather fabulous product made by a company called Jacquard in the United States. It is what's known as an inert powder, so it means that you can mix this with anything, absolutely anything, to make it into a version of something. So, for example, I'm going to be using it with watercolour and gum arabic to make it into a sort of gouache kind of thick consistency. But you can mix it with an acrylic binder to make it into an acrylic. You could mix it with linseed oil to make it into an oil paint. You could even mix it with clear nail varnish and uh, paint your nails with it if you really wanted to. So uh, I can't remember what this colour is called. I sort of picked them out because of what they look like. This is called Reflex Violet. <coughs> I might start singing a Duran Duran song for those of you who know the 80s. Right, so we've got that. And we've also got this, also made by Jacquard. Now, you don't have to necessarily have this version of it. Um, you could use a liquid gum arabic. Uh, what I want to do is to mix it with my Perlex powder and the watercolour. And the reason that I'm using powder rather than liquid is because I want to have control over the quantity and the thickness of it. You can do it with the liquid, um, but I just prefer the powder for this. And the other really high tech bit of kit is a bamboo skewer, which I'm going to use uh, for dispensing out my uh, various powders. So over here, let's take a bit of that uh, gum arabic and let's uh, start with the very technical version, which is a dollop. There we go. That's going in there. A bit of cookery going on, really. And then into look at that. How lovely is that? Um, I can't imagine why I chose this colour, can you? And then a bit of that violet going to go in there too. And let's put the lid on. And then I think what uh, I'll do is I'm going to use my bamboo um, skewer to mix it together rather than use my brush. And then hopefully the watercolour, the perlex and the gum arabic powder are all going to combine to make a much stickier consistency paint. Look at that. Really kind of paste-like. Rather lovely. And then with that, I can either use it like that so that it's nice and thick, or I can thin it out with water and it will go like watercolour. It's just a sort of a variation on this, really. That's, uh, oh, that is gloopy, isn't it? Um, now, what brush do I want to use for this? I think I want to have a bit more control over this. So let's switch to my uh, SAA Imitation Sable brush. What's the difference between these two brushes? They're both uh, imitation hair, so they're both a nylon filament. Uh, this one is delightfully known as a synthetic squirrel, which I think is the best description for anything ever. It sounds like a superhero. Um, and it's what's known as a mop or uh, more accurately known as a quill brush. So it's kind of quite floppy. It's good for very impressionistic marks. This is an imitation sable brush, and the point of an imitation sable brush is that it springs back into shape every single time. So you have um, more control over it. Now, lots of you in the live chat are coming up with fabulous variations of things that you can use. 
and tools which you could use to apply it. And Rosie has quite um, accurately said a cotton bud would be good for printing tiny buddly of flowers. Yes, it absolutely would. I am actually going to be using a slightly different tool to that, but a cotton bud will absolutely do. You're all fabulously ahead of me today. I love it. So let's start off with that uh, cactus flower. We're going to set the scene uh, for our Bodleia. So I'm going to drop little dots of that, allowing my brush to kind of dance its way over the surface. I will probably move some of the, oh, well, there's no probably about it. I will definitely be moving some of the colour that I have already put down. But I don't know that that's a bad thing, if I'm honest. So let's go back into that. I also think another bit of spatter for our Bodleia. I have managed to get spatter everywhere this morning, but you wouldn't expect anything less, would you? So let's mix up some more. Let's get some of it a bit further down. Use the brush to kind of dance it across the surface. Trying to make slightly more considered marks. You'll see that I'm not choking my brush. I'm not holding it down here. And I'm trying to not rest my hand on the surface so that I get more instant looking marks. Coming down here, let's put a bit of extra spatter into that. And then let's take some of uh, our lovely mix over here and add a bit of water to it and drop that in and see if it creates anything very different. I'm gonna need to do something else with this in a minute, but I'll worry about that in just a second. It's coming together. It's all good, uh, this one. And then dropping that, it's not, you can't quite see the variation that I can see in front of me, but there's enough of it there. Like I said, it's only vaguely got to look like a Buddleia because I am not a botanical painter. Shocking news to all of you, I know. Let's do some nice little kind of marks that show the sort of vague notion that the Buddleia has a trumpet based uh, flower on it bringing it together and then with this into here uh, I want to create some much more considered marks I can do it because it's a thicker consistency and it gives you that bit of variation in your mark making and then you get some nice kind of formal shapes as well as the more informal ones and uh, because I'm such a fan of printmaking, if you've watched some of my other YouTube videos or been in any, any of my uh, classes, you will know printmaking features very heavily in my work. And this is just another form of printmaking in its most basic. If you think of potato prints or leaf prints that you, I was going to say do as a kid, I still do them now. But it is that form of transfer. And so what I've got now is an interesting array of colours and a grubby pencil. Now, uh, what do I need to do to that? I don't think I want to do any more to that at the moment because it's getting ahead of the moth. And I don't like to unbalance my pictures so that one area is more worked up than the other. I'm going to give that a bit of a dry. The Perlex, incidentally, will take a bit longer to dry than normal watercolour because it is, uh, the gum Arabic is essentially, as it says on the pot, a gum, a glue. So it will just take a little bit longer. <clears throat> Let's get that drying off. I'm going to need to dry it from the back as well. Turn it up. So if I had all the time in the world, I would uh, dry this off properly. But so that you don't have to watch paint dry, we will leave it a little bit on the sticky side. It will start going off as I mix up some of my other colours. Can you see now, because I'm only drying it from one side, my paper is starting to curl. 
So always a good idea to dry it from the back if you can. <coughs> let's have a think and a look yeah it's still a bit on the sticky side and let's do a look at look, look at how metallic that is look at that whoop, whoop. very very good um i think we need to do a bit of a paper dance in the opposite direction as well you probably notice that i'm quite brutal with um my materials you can be you don't have to um be really kind of kind and polite to them often they get the better of you if you're too kind and polite to them so sometimes you do have to wrestle them to the ground a little bit right let's move on to moth shall we so uh looking at the photograph i've just got to call the photograph up myself so that i can see it too we need uh, to think about some uh, kind of copper brown colors and a lovely orange there too so let's prep our colors in advance uh what have we got that we can use we've got iridescent copper let's have a dollop of that in fact let's have three dollops of that we'll have one over oh hello has that dried up i think it has let's um oh let's encourage it shall we this is why i this is what happens when you don't look after your watercolor tubes and you don't clean them out and you don't keep them upright uh, is that going to come out? No, it's not. So uh, plan B, let's stick that there. Luckily, I did have a plan B. I've got two colours of Perlex here. So can you see now why A, I don't um, uh, try this in advance and B, why I have so much stuff around me? So I've got, um, what's this one called? Super Bronze in the Perlex here. And I've got uh, a very uninspiring description of Dark Brown. So we'll go for those. Let's find uh, a clean bamboo skewer. I have more than one bamboo skewer as well. And let's go for the super bronze. Now, I know that some of you are going to have questions about how much powder to gum Arabic. And there are uh, manufacturers' suggestions. Uh, but to be honest, um, again, unsurprisingly, I just kind of, it, it's a bit of a, I'll do it until it looks right. Ooh, shiny new one. So you can, you can say, oh, it's one part powder and four parts gum arabic or four parts powder and one part gum arabic. It really doesn't matter. It's not going to not paint on something because you mess around with the consistencies of it. Now I've got this one as well, which is called pumpkin orange. And uh, I think we need some of that too. All of these new. Look at that. <laughs> uh, can you see I was channeling it in uh, what I'm wearing today as well? Got an orange vibe going on. Let's get the lids back on these before I shoot them everywhere and become my own version of pumpkin orange. And then let's get our gum arabic and uh, put that very technical dollop of each. I kind of like one to one ratio myself. But you play around with it. If you have these products, play around with it. And you'll find that it's a different consistency if you use um, liquid as opposed to using uh, the powdered gum arabic. Right, I'm going to wash the brush out because what I want to do is add some water to each one. And the easiest way to deposit it is to use my brush and to actually squeeze it into each receptacle. There we go. So there's um, the swirling vortex of doom in the water. And let's clean that off. Uh, let's mix these together. So this was the um, uh, super bronze. Look at that. Ooh, that's rather lovely. Liking that. Um, let's give that a bit of a clean. And let's mix up the dark brown, which... I hope you, yes, you can see it, a, a very uninspiring name, but a very rich kind of old fashioned bronze kind of color that's going on there. Kind of, I don't know what you would equate that to. Kind of Roman armor, just made me think of that. And then let's have a look at this uh, pumpkin and we'll get that mixed together. I'm sure you can very clearly see what I'm gonna be using these colors for 
let's get that that's not mixing oh there we go I don't think I've got enough water in that it will be okay in a minute when I've mixed it all together right let's get a bit more of it incorporated and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use these colors uh, to block in my moth um, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that I'm just going to put the colours uh, vaguely in the right area and then I'll worry about the detail and, and everything else afterwards. OK, so let's start with a slightly smaller brush. We've got a size six brush going on here. Uh, let's have a look at my photograph and we'll start with uh, the back wing, I think. Now, I don't need to worry about my shadows. Why don't I need to worry about my shadows? I don't need to worry about my shadows because the black paper is taking care of them. So this is why working on black paper can sometimes uh, make your head hurt a little bit because if you're used to working on white paper, you will know that you need to uh, kind of work from the lightest thing, which is your white paper, towards the darkest thing, which is going to be your shadows. But of course your shadows already taken care of on this paper so it does require a little bit of a different mindset because if I use a blending out technique down here to smudge that perlex into the surroundings can you see that the shadow is taken care of because I don't have to worry about uh, making it dark because my paper's doing it for me so if you do struggle with shadows in your work have a play with the black paper because sometimes um, people don't apply shadows as dark as they might like and you don't need to worry because the black paper does it all for you now uh that was the uh was that the no that was <laughs> i don't remember what color i'm using now um i'm a bit of this i think up over the top of my moth Woo, that's very lovely liking that and coming in and around i was going to say the nose of the moth don't know that moths have noses i'm sure some of you moth experts out there will tell me the correct term let's bring that down it's quite dark uh, down at the bottom but i want to make it metallic so we'll stick some of that darker brown in that's coming together rather nicely and let's fuzz out his fluffy little bottom and uh, kitchen roll will always help with that uh, let's have another look let's go for that uh, orange i've mixed up way too much of this far too much i was not being particularly frugal with it never mind i could always save it for another day incidentally while i'm doing this if you mix up perlex with gum arabic or if you mix anything um, up with gum arabic and you don't want to waste it you can allow it to dry and um re-wet it for your next uh painting adventures and it will come good again so you don't have to worry about wasting it i could scrape this into a pot um i don't think i'm going to be doing that just uh for ease of tidying up but if you mixed all of your perlex is into pots then uh, you'd never waste any of it would you and you could use it for the next moth painting right coming down in there so we're blocking that in let's see if the close-up camera will pick it up uh, for you oh look how metallic it looks in the close-up that's very cool <laughs> So you can see we've got um, a right old shine going on and if I use some of those little kind of circular blending out techniques you'll be able to see how I'm getting one into the other. Now I've still got work to do to this yet quite obviously but uh, this uh, blocking in technique helps me to see what goes where. Now the delightful thing about using that powdered gum arabic with the perlex paints is that i have control over the consistency so you probably noticed when i put those strokes in let's repeat that for you um up here that because it is a lovely sticky consistency can you see how it holds its shape on the paper so it is uh, much more like using gouache 
than it is necessarily using watercolour. Let's go back to the overhead and uh, see what we've got. That's okay. It's lacking detail, but it needs to have a very good dry. So let's give that a blast. Now Trudy is saying, oh, good morning, Simone. Uh, Trudy is saying, does mixing perlex with gum arabic make it into a similar medium to metallic gouache? Yes, it absolutely does. Hopefully those little marks that you just saw me make, uh, Trudy, um, uh, more uh, easily able to be understood. <laughs> Lovely Lynn is in the room. Good morning. Yes, she says that uh, she's quite close. I think if I shouted loud enough, a couple of you would actually hear me. So we'll get that dried off. You will take much more time, care and attention on yours than I have with mine let's give it a bit of a waggle also so can you see those lovely that look at that shimmer Ooh, delightful very happy with that now to finish this off because we are in the last sort of 10 15 minutes of today i'm going to firstly put this to one side before something happens to it uh unsurprisingly because it is a technique that i use all the time I'm going to use some pens to work back into my moth. Now, these are not metallic. I've kind of done the metallic thing. Uh, as much as I love a bit of uh, metallic going on, I don't really want to overdo it too much. It needs to have uh, a foil. So as much as we've got the lovely shine and the highlights and everything else, we also need it to have some detail and we need to be able to flatten some areas. So I've got an ordinary kind of no frills black sketching pen, a waterproof sketching pen, just in case I want to go back over the top of it. Um, this is what I'm going to be using first. And then I've got a selection of Posca pens. So these are the acrylic paint markers, so versatile. If you are a mixed media artist or you like to kind of deviate from fine art through to illustration, through to a bit of craft and journaling, I cannot recommend these highly enough because they are so versatile. They'll go on any surface at all. I haven't found a surface yet that they won't go on to. And they come in a range of nib sizes and colours. I've got a sort of super fine and um, a fine here. This one's called a 1M. This is called a 1MR. And as you can see, I've got colours suitable for my subject. I don't know if this is what I'm going to use yet. Um, I've also got a white kicking around somewhere, probably on the floor, and some other things too. But I'm going to start with my black pen. Because another joy... Oh, good morning, uh, Nula. One of the joyful things about working on black paper is that you can work back into your subject with a black pen to add some definition over the top of it. So here and there, I can go around some of these shapes with a lovely Buddleia style scribble uh, for stems or stalks or flowers or the like, and I can draw back over the top of it. Now it does disappear a little bit. It does um, disappear, but I'm also going to be using probably a black Posca pen at some point too. What I'm doing at the moment is kind of breaking up the colour, setting the scene for the rest of it. And I do love a scribble. Who doesn't love a scribble? Now going over to my moth, let's have a look. We have um, these antenna here, which I'm going to have to, in the photograph they're black, but because I'm working on black paper, they'll need to be white. I'm not bothered about uh, things like that. What I want to do is add detail to my moth already. That is better. I can break up the edges of my metallic where I've painted it by going back in with a black pen. Let's show you that in close up so that you can see what we're doing. Um, good morning. Uh, Hannah Muller is in the room as well. Good morning. Thank you very much uh, for joining. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, yes, Anita is saying Posca on Windows. If you follow the SAA on their socials, you will have seen some fabulous work that Anita did on the windows of um, HQ. And we usually have to say to Anita to step away from the Posca pens. 
because she goes crackers with them. Right, let's get that wing in. Let's break up some of that definition going in and around. What else? We've got some nice patterning going on on some of the wings too. So I think getting involved with the black pen and that will be interesting to break up that metallic. I think I'm going to need to do something else with it, but we'll see what happens. And we've got lovely patterns on the kind of underside of that wing. Already that's uh, looking better. Let's go to overhead. So it's coming together now. We're sort of breaking up some of the more formal areas. But I definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm just going to reach down into the bag of stuff that's on the floor. Or, except I can't find it, uh, a black Posca pen and a white Posca pen. We might go for some other colours as well, but we'll start with those two. We're going to give them a really good shake. If you follow my um, Ask Ali blog, then you will have seen um, a little article about how to care for your Posca pens. So going over here, I'm going to wipe the nib just to get it clean because I'm a terror. No, it's not quite, not quite shaken up enough yet. You need to kind of reactivate them. You don't need to pump them again. They will come good. There we go. That's better. And then let's go and give our moth some highlights. And you will find that this shows up quite bright. So be careful with it. Use my finger to knock back some of those areas. And a very fine line for the proboscis. Now I know that the proboscis is black in the photograph. I get that. But we're working on a dark paper. So we're kind of looking for alternative ways of doing it, aren't we? Let's get those the highlights on those antenna in. That's working really well. And what we can do is use a small damp brush over here. And whilst that pen is still wet, we can smudge it into its surroundings so we get a more refined mark on our surface rather than having to put up with it being a very hard line we can soften it with a brush and then it looks much more like i've painted it rather than necessarily uh drawn on with a pen now again i've made a bit of a boob there because I, I stuck my finger in it and smudged it but look if i take my black pen i can erase it how much fun is that very editable this is why i'm a mixed media painter and not necessarily a watercolorist so we'll add some pen back into those antenna coming together um a bit of white highlight on this wing i think to bring it forward and possibly a few little highlights in here for um just a kind of to bring this wing forward i think so coming in that way and i think now it needs a bit of a highlight around the eye doesn't it yeah there we go that's better and now we've got one wing coming forward and one wing pushing back let's go for orange so can you see i've got the metallic i've got uh the, the black paper giving it the drama and now I've got the pen work giving it some detail so we're in those kind of dying throes of the um, painting now the bit where it's very easy to overdo it if you're not careful if we get some lovely streaks some highlights of orange going in let's add a little touch of orange into the eye and sort of integrate that i tell you we could do with a bit of a white highlight couldn't we over the back i don't want it to be too stark if i take my damp brush and smudge that in that looks loads better uh, i'm so tempted i know i don't really want that wing to come forward too much but I've got the shape slightly wrong as well. Oh, that's a black Posca. I don't want that. 
um, where am I going with this? It needs to be pointier, that back wing. So let's uh, take the edge off it there. Where's my, um, can you see I've got a lot of things in my hand? Let's bring the paint back in. Because I have got the, the shape of that wing a bit wrong, let's add a pointy area. That's me being super fussy, isn't it? How fussy can one artist be? Turns out, supremely fussy. There we go, that's going in. And then if we take a bit of orange, we can add to the pattern on that back wing to give it an edge. Back in with the water, a bit of smudging. That's all looking pretty good, quite happy with that. What's going on in the base of it? Do I just kind of leave it a bit lost? I think I do, because it's kind of, uh, and I didn't really, maybe I did this subconsciously, um, but I, I didn't really mean for it to sort of emerge from the darkness, from the gloom, but I quite like that. That's that's working quite well. I do think I need to go back in with a purple Posca. Let's see how that is working. And we'll make some additional marks into the Budlier so that it comes forward a little bit. Now the Posca will definitely go over the top. Where I was saying about the black sketching pen, it sinks into the metallic a bit, but the Posca has much stronger properties. So it will sit over the top of that metallic. I think that's enough for there. Then let's see if we can be clever. Always a first time. Let's use our orange that we used over here on the moth for a few highlights on the Budlier to kind of tie the two subjects together. I'm forever saying uh, to people in my classes that there needs to be a link between the background and the foreground and the subjects. They don't want to just stand alone. Now I can't really put violet on my moth as much as I would like to but what I can do is I can put moth colours on my Budlier. And so if I take a damp brush, I can smudge some of those wetter marks so that we get a bit of lost and found going on and it disappears into the background. And then to finish it, I need my spattering tool. Going into that and I think it's going to be orange orange is going to be that lovely pumpkin perlex that we put together so a bit of it uh, near to the moth so that it hopefully gives that illusion of beating wings i think it needs to be, does it need to be thinner or thicker maybe a bit thinner let's pop just a tiny bit of it down here so we've got that explosion and then let's go in with the pumpkin on top of the budlier to give some highlights for that. And I am gonna call that done, I think. I don't think I want to do anything else to it. I think if I do anything else to it, it is uh, going to spoil it. So for a bit of a recap, uh, we used the black watercolor paper for the drama. Uh, we used a combination of uh, watercolor paints, perlex, some powdered gum arabic, and then some pen to finish it all off to bring it together for our hummingbird chokmah. Did you enjoy that? I had too much fun with that. That was really um, a bit of a, an exploration. I've never painted one of those hawk moths before. Painted plenty of butterflies and things in my time, so not too different. But uh, the metallics on the dark paper, isn't that just such a lovely thing to do? And cheers up a dull day. Let's have a look at those uh, metallics uh, in the light. Let's get a look at that. Look at the shine and the shimmer on those things. Aren't those fabulous? Liking those a lot. So if you like your metallics, I'm not a fan of glitter. Don't like glitter at all. But the where the metallic gives you that lovely sheen, um, I think it's an interesting dimension. And if you are wanting to cheer up a bit of a dull day, then what better than to hunt out all of your metallics? 
Now I've just got to reach for my notes because I need to tell you uh, where you can find me and uh, the other things that I am getting up to. Uh, don't forget the website down there at the bottom of the screen, www.learningtopaint.co.uk. Uh, don't forget uh, the socials at Ali Board Artist. And please, if you can just take a few seconds out to like or to subscribe or to follow or to share. Like I said at the top of this uh, broadcast, those things are absolutely free to you, but mean the world to artists like myself, because it just means that the more people that know about us, the more people that we can talk to, like your lovely selves. Now, I am back with Technique Tuesday. There's lots of things happening between now and then. If you're watching live, uh, check out the, the website and the socials for all of those sorts of things. Um, I am back on the 2nd of April and our theme for April is a bit of a different one. I called it All Things Drawn. So we're not exactly going back to basics, but I am going to look at drawing as a tool, not something that I gravitate towards. So I'm trying to find my own spin on those things. And the uh, subject for the Technique Tuesday on the 2nd of April is To The Lighthouse. Now that is quite a specific title. Some of you will know what I am alluding to, but if you're not quite sure what it is that I'm alluding to, you are just going to have to tune in and find out. Now you can find me all over the place between then and now. And if you are watching this live on Tuesday, the 5th of March, uh, 2024, I'm going to be at SAA HQ tomorrow, leading a workshop all with experimental landscapes, which I'm really looking forward to. So I'm off now to dash up the country to uh, head off to Newark on Trent. But wherever you are, no matter where you are in the world, please take lots of care of yourselves, won't you? And I will catch up with you very soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, lovely people. Bye.